My name is Maeve O'Rourke. I am here with Joe Brown. It is the start of day two of the Orlando Regional Championships for Pokemon VGC. Top Cut looks so intense today. And if you were watching along with our matches yesterday, you can really only barely begin to grasp the caliber of these players. And with that, I really want to get into, Joe, who our first round of this top 32 is going to be. I think with that little preview of a video, just kind of talking about how this works, we're gonna be able to see two players, one of whom is a well-seasoned, long-time player, and one of whom is new. Yep, brand new. Uh, Bouchon went nine and one. I think it was nine and oh going into uh, round 10 yesterday. I could be mistaken there. And they actually just started playing competitive VGC two months ago with the drop of Scarlet and Violet. So a brand, literally brand new player dominating the scene, making it to uh, the, you know, I think it was the second overall seed in the entirety of top 32 versus Chuppa across the fourth, who's a player who needs no introduction at this point, especially if you were watching along at San Diego but a couple of weekends ago as Chuppa finished second to G-Sock Lee's team there uh, and has kind of had a little bit of a remix on his team but still the same core because strap in it's going to be some Dondozo matchups. We have a Dondozo mirror today for all of you guys playing bingo at home. Do not worry. I got you. I, I am actually pretty ready for it. Poor Rosemary is not going to get to get her fish facts here on stream today either. You are stuck yeah, yeah, Rose, with message Joe us, and I. Message us some fish facts. Yeah, if jo uh, Rosemary, if you want to get me some fish facts, I might just make a Pinocchio dogfish Pinocchio <laughs> joke. So that might just kind of be where I end up. But like you said, it is that Dondozo uh, mirror. However, Chuppa is bringing something pretty similar. He's bringing that Palma back, which we have not really gotten to see at all this weekend. Yeah, Palma is, has not really been too prevalent. Um, yeah, I wonder what the usage overall out of all of the almost 800 VGC masters we had here in Orlando. I, w I would imagine it's not a very high percentage for Palma uh, on the uh, on the on the list, but for Chuppa, it seems to be a comfort pick for both San Diego and this event, and you can understand why, as Electric Fighting uh, is some really strong coverage, it has access to, has, has Fake Out as well, and then of course, the Revival Blessing is really why the Palma is on Chuppa's team. You can revive one of your fallen teammates and bring them back at half HP. So if that's, if you wanna bring Don Dozo again, or if maybe Chuppa's Golden Go got knocked out unceremoniously early on in the game, and you wanna bring that that back for one last strong make it rain that while it's at half health that's really what paul Ma can provide so it can it's like it's almost like four and a half pokemon to four in a matchup i think another thing we can talk about as well on bouchon's side is another kind of pairing that we saw a lot in series one haven't really gotten to see it all that much this weekend and that is mousehold annihilate and this one specifically being that beat up mousehold yeah, I think it's it's a strategy that is uh, kind of expected, but that doesn't mean it's not effective, right? Just because you know your opponent has beat up an, uh, for a mouse hold to boost the stats for Annihilate for when it goes for Rage Fist, it's gonna be doing more damage because the more times you get hit, the stronger that move is. So just because you're aware of the strategy doesn't mean you necessarily have anything to stop it. One of the other really cool things uh, about how this matchup works, Maeve, is it's really interesting to find out how different trainers walk down different roads and end up at the same destination. Because Chuppa and Bushan both have, as we see them on stage, both have Dondozo Tachigiri, right? But the difference with Bouchon having uh, Mousehold and Annihilate and Volcarona as the Rage Powder user compared to Chuppa, as we can see his accomplishments here, regional finalist, World's Top 32 last season, uh, actually was incredible through Swiss in Worlds. Uh, regional finalist as well in 2018 and the Rhode Island Regional Champion. But for his team, having the more, uh, choosing out Amoongus into Brute Bonnet as the Rage Powder user instead of Bouchon's Volcarona. So they went down different roads, but still ended up with the same team, just different, you know, Pokemon accomplishing the same goal. Yeah, and I think the Brute Bonnet's a really interesting choice, right? Because Amoongus is something that tends to be a little bit less offensive. It moves a little bit slower than Brute Bonnet does. It doesn't exactly have that dark typing. You know, Brute Bonnet does have that four times weakness from something like a Pollen Puff or even a U-turn on the opposite side of the field. So you do have to be mindful of where you're positioning it, especially when you have possibly, you know, a another a super effective move coming in from you know another pokemon on the opposite side but you're not even dealing with an amoongus in this matchup so i think chuppa might feel pretty comfortable bringing it one thing you have to be careful of though is if that annihilate wants to come in and take those beat up
matchups to get that extra base power. He is going to be, you know, really, uh, he's going to have to kind of pay attention to not take some big hits from there, especially something like a drain punch, which would be super effective. Yeah, and it is looking like Bouchon's team, and as we said, this is their this is their first play Pokemon event. So just getting in to VGC with Scarlet and Violet, and hopefully Bouchon can go on a nice run in their VGC career. But you see the Dondozo Tatsugiri, but there are other heavy hitters on this squad, like Annihilate, like the uh, Life Orb Fluttermane, actually as well. Instead of you know, typically you can see a boost energy or focus ash, something like that. This time around, Bouchon went for Life Orb and. One thing I'm just really curious about, his Focus Ash mm. user in Volcarona, I think with Tailwind and Rage Powder, it can just either redirect any crucial attack that would be going towards that Annihilate for Dondozo potentially, or it can actually just use Tailwind and then some of those Pokemon with a little more of a middling speed like Annihilate can have if you just feel a little too slow against some of the top threats in the, the metagame, that Tailwind will double your speed on for all your Pokemon for the next four turns. So uh, I, I think that Volcarona could be really interesting in this matchup. And then the other thing to note, Maeve, on, a, on excuse me, Mouse Hold is actually holding safety goggles, mm. which could be a really nice answer into Brute Bonnet with Spore. Absolutely right that safety goggles because you're not running a move like population bomb you really don't feel the need to bring something like wide lens because that's kind of where that would come into play so those safety goggles help to deal with things like that redirection like a spore as well helps you to kind of protect your partner and especially in that in that annihilate right who you want to allow to stay on the field and get those big hits for these players though they are going to be going into their game one the leads here from Bouchon annihilate the mouse hold right out of the gate that is a classic duo Palmont Tatsugiri here for Chapa as well, so putting a little bit of fake out pressure out. Yeah, fake out is definitely a potential on the other side. If you want to stop a beat up into the Annihilate, you can try to fake out the mouse hold there. Palmot also, you know, synonymous with the Focus Sash because of Revival Blessing. You want to ensure that no one hit will be able to KO Palmot. You can try to Revival Blessing later. But for now, just having that fake out pressure would be helpful to stop against the mouse hold. And it looks like Annihilate in this spot. You can, you'd have to try to take damage naturally, right? You'd have to be hit by something. This could be a uh, position that you don't, Chuppa doesn't necessarily need to switch Donjozo in right away. You don't have to worry about those mind games if you can just get off a, a lot of damage early on. Chuppa is actually going for a super offensive strategy here, going for that electric type Terra onto the palm on here. He's gonna be using double shock, which actually acts like burn up. But when you have Terrastalize, you don't lose your typing. You get to still keep the uh, electric typing from that double shock. Mousehold protecting, so he called this protect instead of going for that fake out, is gonna be trying to do as much damage into that Annihilate, but Annihilate also protecting here. So it looks like Chuppa probably went pretty hard, but I think it was the kind of the right call to make. Draco Meteor into the Protect is not going to do any damage here from that Tatsugiri. And of course, this uh, Palmont is not going to be doing any damage either. I love that turn out of Chuppa. I love the aggression. I applaud it. Unfortunately, all Bouchon had to do was click Double Protect uh, <laughs> because he, it's not necessarily he was worried about Terra Electric and, Dr and Draco Meteor. It was just the fake out pressure that was too much for Bouchon to try to be concerned with on that turn, obviously. You can't fake out the Annihilate, but the Mouse Hold was definitely protecting for that reason. So now that you have blown your Terra this early on turn one, you kind of have to commit to it, right? Palma is definitely going to be a lot more valuable in this match than you may have necessarily wanted it to be, where you'd want Dondozo to be, to be the cleaner. Now you're going to need to get a lot of value out of your Palma. Tatsugiri is actually going to switch out for Dondozo this turn. Mouse Hold's Follow Me is going to redirect that attention from Palma over to the Mouse Hold. No beat up this turn. Palma close combat though into that mouse hold is enough to get that knockout which is huge because you're not letting that rage fit get rage fist get boosted up from that annihilate this turn annihilate is still going to be able to fire something pretty strong back if they targeted down into the tatsugiri which they did not they actually went for that rage fist this turn just to get some damage it's currently only 50 base power but with a critical hit that does bring the palm on down almost into the red and it is, uh, it does crucially break the focus sash on Palmont, right? So you would uh, you would imagine that Chuppa is not potentially using Revival Blessing, or it's not gonna be given the opportunity by Bouchon, I should say, to use Revival Blessing in this game, since Palmont is so low of HP already. Now Bouchon brings the Dondozo in on his side, and at any point, 
the, either of these trainers can switch their Tatsugiri in to try to activate that commander ability where Tatsugiri pops into Don Dozo's mouth and boosts all of its stats by two stages. So usually the Don Dozo player feels that they're more confident because they get the really strong boosted Pokemon. However, in a mirror like this, you can actually match that. And because of unaware, none of those stat boosts <laughs> actually matter whatsoever. What's really interesting too, right? Even though the stat boosts don't matter, they're both actually running that curly form Tatsugiri. So they're both prioritizing that attack. Again, not gonna matter with this Tatsugiri coming in here. It is not like you can really get a switch and uh, change that Pokemon up to try and get some more big damage. But either way, you're still doing damage here. And this boost is going to be nice for the Annihilate on the opposite side of the field at a minimum. But Annihilate also switching out here. I'm expecting we're seeing this Don Dozo mirror bright and there early this is. morning. Joe Brown, Tatsugiri is on the field. All right, everybody. Get, get some popcorn ready because... These trainers can't even switch out if they wanted to, because <laughs> at this point, Dondozo is locked on to the field. You have access to your four moves, and that's it. Like we mentioned, unaware means these stat buffs don't matter. What is interesting uh, is Bouchon's obviously not gonna opt into this now, but uh, as a dragon type for the terror typing on Chuppa, which is what he actually used in San Diego, boosting that damage in on its order ups if he was able to. Chuba can't take advantage of that this t this game because Palmot went for the uh, excuse me, went for the uh, Terrasa Lizzie anyway. But in response, Bouchon actually has Steel Terra for this exact scenario. Oh, and two substitutes. Who would have seen it? It is. This is truly, I'm getting some flashbacks here to, I believe it was EUIC finals with uh, with um, some stack attackers, if I'm not mistaken. These substitutes here, they're going to get this leftover support. Again, the fact that Chuppa does not have access to his ter uh, terrestrialization and really cannot pull it at this point because it's stuck in back with that palm on means that I think, you know, Bouchon's kind of got the opportunity to go for a couple of different things. It's protect time guys we are we are in here for the long haul um i hope you are all ready to kind of sit back and relax with joe brown and i it is a protect situation on both sides here so <laughs> oh boy here we go all right so substitute for anyone who doesn't know uh you <laughs> sacrifice 25 percent of your hp to put that cute little plushy guy right there in front of you and then your opponent will target that substitute instead of your own stat because of leftovers you are then able to recover hp clicking protect as well as another way for Don Dozo to stall out and essentially recover all of that HP you lose from substitute, getting it back with leftovers after a couple of protects. And like we said, they cannot switch out. That's how the Don Dozo interaction works once you combine with Tatsugiri. So uh, it's gonna be a while. Yeah, at least the order up here from Chuppa's Dondoza was not enough to break the sash, I believe, or break the substitute on the other end, and neither was the order up on Bouchon's side. They're getting all of these boosts. These animations are honestly just adding more time, and if these players are kind of going for that timer stall towards the end of the game, Bouchon already has a bit of an advantage by taking so much damage down onto that Palmont with uh, that Rage Fist early in the game. Yeah, I, that that is a factor in this match, like... Um you have a certain amount of time allotted for mm. a match, right? So it's not like this, you know, it can't go on for 500 minutes because the game will run out of time beforehand. Uh, I know Chuppa is a player who is definitely comfortable as playing these long drawn out slow games. I remember uh, one of like my favorite games ever in VGC <laughs> was Chuppa playing against Jeremy Rodriguez's Chansey team oh. in, in, uh, in Dallas, well, at least like five years ago at this point. Um, and everybody, just Jeremy was wiping the floor with everyone with that Chansey team. And Chuppa was like, slow and steady wins the race. He forced it to a game three, made some insane reads and actually beat out that Chansey team. So if there's anybody who can, pro you know, profit off of this slow paced type of game, it is Chuppa. Honestly, I think both of these players have shown the mental stamina after playing 10 rounds of Pokemon yesterday as well. Looks like Chuppa's also able to break that substitute, but Dondozo goes right for another substitute here. Joe it is going to sit behind this plush in this first game of this match. Get that leftovers recovery as well. A nice call there by Bouchon to not, uh, not go for another attack and just try and continue to play defensively. Yeah. I if you expect the order up to attack, you're getting, you're getting, when you're getting low enough, I should say, on your Dondozo, you know the sub will be broken, so you can just set it up 
again. Uh, I don't know if we're going to have to get started getting to a point where we track the, uh, the, the PP of some of these moves, like Protect and Substitute and whatever. Uh, the Wave Crash is really not going to do too much damage either way because they are both water types. I don't think that there's any point in Bouchon ever using that Steel Terra. Like, yes, would you take less damage from Order Up because it's a dragon attack? Sure, but since you're kind of in this unaware game state anyway, you might as well say, save the, ta the, the Terra for whenever you get out of this stale match. Yeah, another wave crash here. Again, not very effective into that substitute. Again, I think at this point, right, you're trying to see how much damage these things are doing. Not enough to take out that substitute. Dondozo once again going for another order up here. They're really just stacking boost. We know, I think, at this point that that order up, I think, should be enough to take out that substitute based on the fact that it's already taken a couple, and it has. So now at this point here, Chuppa has been faster every single turn, so he can just get another substitute up for basically free. Yeah, and then with the leftovers recovery, it's just going to, you know, keep getting them back up to full HP. So you would imagine this probably could get down to a, uh, a PP stall scenario. I don't think you can actually run, especially if they use their PP ups to have maximum uh, amounts of their moves there. I don't know if it'll get down to like a struggle situation just off of the sheer amount of buttons that would need to be clicked before the timer ran out. Not sure if... Uh, if that happens, but uh, well, I guess what we can see about 20 minutes from now is <laughs> Chuppa has a 4-2-3 Pokemon advantage. So truly, if this game is in an untenable state that cannot be broken with this Dondozo mirror, if the timer ran out naturally, Chuppa would win 4-3 if, you know, the, the round timer or whatever. But you want to click your moves fast as well, mm. Maeve, because you don't want to be the player that runs out of your time, because that would mean regardless of board state, if you ran out of time on your side, you would lose the game. Explain your time to me, just for people who may not understand. So there is an overall amount of time of a match timer. Then there is your time similar to a chess clock where you have a specific amount of minutes at the start of the game. Off the top of my head, I want to say seven. I could be wrong. I know in previous games it was seven, mm -hmm. but it's somewhere between five and seven minutes uh, off the top of my head. I can't remember. But uh, if you have, let's say, 45 seconds a turn to choose your moves, if you wait 44 seconds every single time, you are going to have significantly less time in your time, your chest clock. Like, for example, you see that your time on Shepard's End was 4 minutes and 43 seconds. So if he waited 43 seconds, he would only have 4 minutes left. In these matchups, you want to click your buttons as fast as possible because that gives you the better chance that your opponent, if they take longer on their decision making, they would run out of your time before you would. Yeah, and I think what's interesting here, too, is Chuppa made this call to put himself into this Dondozo mirror, knowing that it's pretty long and grueling, but like you said, if he can make it through this mirror, he wins the game. He has that Pokemon advantage. He also would have the information advantage, too, by not revealing what his last Pokemon is. There is at least, you know, 16 PP for both Substitute and Protect. So that right there is 32 turns of stalling if you're just trying to get through those two moves. That doesn't even include Wave Crash or Order Up, depending on if they have fully maxed out the PP of those moves here. Both these Dondozo Substitutes also broken. They are back at full HP thanks to these leftovers. They can continue to click Substitute for a while. <laughs> yeah, so... Uh uh, this, that's, uh, that's what we said. It's going to be a it's going to be a long matchup here, and I, I, I do agree with you that there could be benefit to not revealing your fourth Pokemon because the uh, you know Bouchon would not have that information going into a game two. Uh, however, in this matchup where they have such such similar strategies with Dundozo and Tatsugiri, it might not be as effective for Bouchon or relevant for Bouchon to know who that fourth is since the major threat mm. is ta is Dundozo Tatsugiri to begin with. Uh, you know, it's not as it might not be as crucial to know if it's group on it or talent flame in the in, in the fourth slot necessarily. Yeah, I think at that point, right, there is there is kind of that opportunity of just keeping keeping your cards close to your chest, which is always nice. But you can probably, if you're Bouchon, make a pretty big guess. I mean, half the time what you're thinking of right now is can I get a critical hit to knock out the substitute earlier than if I was, uh, you know, than just a normal hit, which is going to take, I think, at least two. So the uh, the Dondos are here just kind of firing these order ups at each other. They cannot get boosted into their attack stat anymore. Wave Crash is going to give them some recoil damage. So you're honestly going to be taking more damage at that point and then having to heal that up with that leftovers. So if you 
can continue to hit these order ups, maybe get a critical hit. If you're Chuppa and you know you're faster and Bouchon has not set up a substitute yet, that may be the time to try and go for a big attack. At this point, I think it's kind of just this weird waiting game of going for it. Yeah, so there are 16 times four here. So 32 plus times two, that's 64 different uh, <laughs> different possible turns on either Chuppa or Bouchon's team. They have the exact four same moves. Yeah, and if you take two seconds to lock in, because again, you only click one button each time. There's only one Pokemon active on the field. The Tatsugiris are untargetable while inside Dondozo's mouth there. So uh, that also that's also another factor as to why these mirrors are so grueling, because it physically takes less time to click one button than it does to tick two. <laughs> It's like speedrunning strats here, though, yeah. for for this match. <laughs> yeah, that's what I would call Don Dozamira, speedrunning. <laughs> It's, it's a long play speed run is really what it is. If you can, you can somehow <laughs> combine the two of them, the 100% PP usage uh, run here for these trainers. Uh, I'm just saying, Rose, we're out here on a, on a little raft, a little buoy. We need a light, we need a lifeboat from Rose, giving us some fun facts. I hear they are on their way. Yeah, so hopefully, I, the, hopefully the audience can enjoy these fun facts as, uh, as Rose throws us, uh, throws us a, uh, a life preserver. I really do feel like Pinocchio though, when Pinocchio does go into the dogfish's mouth and stays there for I think what 40 days so you know it's it's truly a little bit poetic at this point um, I think we, we are kind of in it for the long haul here Joe you you and I we started off bright and early this morning yes. uh, looking at fish yeah, and uh, for anyone under or kind of wondering, like, oh, why are they not calling out a precisely every single move that comes out? That's because it literally doesn't matter. <laughs> That's why we're not calling every single play because the health is so minuscule, the damage being done, that it's not, we don't have to necessarily keep track of every call as the moment is happening. It's gonna happening. be, they're gonna be clicking order up this is the order substitute <laughs> protect order ups and then uh if you're and then protect again possibly and then if you still take damage substitute again so anytime your substitute break it breaks it goes substitute protect order up you're gonna see that consistently until order up is gone and then wave crash will replace it and that's and that's about the order of operations here i think when you're going through and again with speed running you're trying to menu very quickly <laughs> <laughs> yeah the, the order of operations okay so you know because we're just going on tangents here uh so you know like pem, were you taught pemdas as a, yes as please a kid, excuse right? my dear aunt okay. sally so order of yes exactly our friend adam doricott growing up on the other side of the pond was <gasps> not taught pemdas it was no. something called like bimdas or something like Pem -das. that Pem Daz, Daz is not Pem Daz. No, 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 it's like something else that they're taught over in, in EU was like Bim Daz instead of Pem Daz. So I wonder, for any of our European uh, audience watching along, are you familiar with the term Pem Daz that we use here in, North, in, uh, in, at least in America? I'm not sure of all of North America. Maybe Sierra can tell us, she's Canadian. Yeah, maybe we can bug her too. Wish she can let us in with some fish facts, I'm sure. At this point, right, again, these these trainers are, it, it is Bim Daz from, from Adam, <laughs> from what I'm seeing, B-I-M-D-A-S. Not sure what that means, I'm sure if there are any uh, maths teachers oh. out there. Jamie Boyd, please let me know. <laughs> Do the maths on that one. Do the maths on that one. Let me know. Let me hear uh, what exactly that means. But I, again, I, like Joe said, there is not a lot that I can give you guys here in terms of exciting play-by-play -play commentary because it really is these same several moves over and over again. That time was a wave crash and the substitute did fade. It's well, just gonna, hype. That is kind of hype. Uh, at this point, what's interesting is Chuppa has the faster Pokemon, so he can maybe get some extra damage out. If he does enough damage where he can take care of the substitute before the leftover is fully able to kind of heal up that Pokemon, then maybe that's what you do. But both these trainers are probably going to click substitute this turn. It's their best play. Okay, so what I wonder in these scenarios, right, Clearly, Chuffa and Bouchon came into this event knowing that they were not going to be the only players that have Don Dozo. So this is definitely an expectation that this type of mirror is possible. If there's a lot of stress, you're in top 32, you want as many championship points as possible. You want to really try uh, to, to go as far as you can here in Orlando. In game two, do you opt for this same strategy again, like regardless of outcome, just because of the the silliness of it? I think, honestly, I think Bouchon... Especially if you lose this ridiculously drawn out match. I think Bouchon does strat. not lead Mousehold. I almost feel like you almost go for something where you have the Dondoza or the Tatsugiri in the lead so that you can swap in your other option, right? And then you can maybe set up yourself earlier without taking a knockout. 
I have a fish fact for you, Joe. Go for it. Brought to you by Rosemary. Cleaner wrasse are small fish that live in reefs that have a mutualistic relationship with bigger fish in the ocean. They set up stations where larger fish come by to get their gills and teeth cleaned so the big fish get clean and the cleaner wraths get food. I know similar things happen with sea turtles. I've seen things like that, which are not fish. However, uh, Sierra's fish fact is fish are friends, not food. So uh, one that of them, is, one of them has the degree and one of them is our friend. So. <laughs> oh, my, oh, my Lord, made from the top rope on to Sierra like that. I'm kidding. I'm sorry, Sierra. I'm sorry. That was that was that was harsh. Uh, I did not mean it. I thought it'd be funny. <laughs> oh, man, that was that was good. That was uh. I agree. You know what? That's a great movie, too. You know, Fish Are Friends, Not Food. We all know the movie that we're uh, referring to. I think that's one of the best films from that company, from that corporation that they've ever made. Definitely a way more interesting way to watch fish, I think, than watching them Watching substitute. them talk instead uh, of cleaning uh, teeth. Yeah, I, I mean, cleaning teeth as well, I think. But either, I mean, I have a fear of dentists, so that's... Yeah, I don't think I'm interested in, like, watching a fish clean teeth. I don't know if that's... Uh, I'm not like, Tatsu it's like, Giri's boys, probably, it's Tatsu Friday Giri. night. What are we up to? Tatsugiri's cleaning teeth right now. We're going to watch Tatsu some Giri's cleaner wrasse. <laughs> Again, double protects here. We're seeing even from these, don or, you know, these both on each side, right? One on each side. So one's going to fail if it doesn't end up going off. You then also, it's just this, I mean, this game, guys, I know we really wanted to feature these players because one of them, like we have said, you it know, could Chuppa's, be a brand new arc for it could be, it, Correct. It could be a brand new arc. Chapa. His 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 bottom accomplishment is from 2011. Yeah, he wants he wants his first modern regional championship, and he's come so close so many times. Correct, and I mean top four at San Diego was absolutely insane. You know, he's from the New York region. We've talked about how strong Tri-State is in general, and you know he's a very well-known player, not just because of his name being unique that he's somebody that you remember oftentimes, but he does still. You know, he's in incredibly dedicated to Pokemon and to VGC in general. And again, for Bouchon as well, kind of coming in here and being a newer player, only having a couple. Of months experience but still being able to go nine and one in swiss rounds on what it, a truly very long day this is a really interesting experience i think for him for his first time of uh playing at a uh, large play pokemon event yeah welcome welcome to the gauntlet Bushan, <laughs> because you did 10 rounds of grueling vgc yesterday and then this is how your top 32 starts off also sierra if you're listening can you tell us if canada uses pemdas or not i'm still sitting on this i'm still waiting for this information, or if you use you use Adam's erroneous BIMDAS situation that he brought up. Yeah, uh, I think uh, it, from Adam, it means brackets, indices, multiplication, addition, sub addition subtraction, uh, division, addition, subtraction, yeah. So, I, you know, it's it's not, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally, it doesn't flow off the tongue nearly exactly. as well. So, even either way, for the order of operation for these trainers, we have come to time. <laughs> And Chuppa won, by the way. And no Chuppa big won. Deal. Sorry, guys. We were getting a little bit. We were getting a little bit. Uh... <laughs> oh, <my God. laughs> yeah. Oh, that was such great action, Chuppa. Wink again. <laughs> oh, man. Chuppa, I think Chuppa knows here. He's like, I am in it for the long haul. I need to take a big old sip of water. Kind of just, man, these, I don't know how many turns that even was in that game. I'm glad I didn't try and keep count. It was definitely more than five. Thank you, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> I can confirm it was more than five turns. Oh my, you're, wow. You and I should be maths teachers, yeah. I think. I think that's where we should go next. We should we should work on our, our BIM DAS. So anyway, I, I know here as well, these trainers are probably gonna go for something pretty much exactly the same from last game, right? Okay. That Palmont being the terrestrialization option, it makes a lot of sense. So what is Bouchon's answer to Chuppa's Palm Mod as he went for the Terra Electric right away? And then obviously the close combat we now know uh, is enough to one hit KO the mouse hold. It's not using a focus hatch or anything like that because it's holding safety goggles for those grass types with their spores and rage powder and stuff like that. Uh, so if Bouchon is worried now knowing that the lead of the fake out threat from Palmot is also very difficult for his annihilate mouse hold lead because it stops the beat up strategy you have to adjust and thank Arceus we have a different lead <laughs> we have the Fluttermane and the Volcarona finally our first time seeing a Paradox Pokemon on stream today only took us a little bit of time these two Pokemon actually have a lot of offensive pressure here if you can take a knockout onto either one of these Pokemon you have set yourself up one if you take the knockout onto Tatsugiri, you ignore that entire uh, 
25 minute, you know, 20 minute interaction between the Dondoza mirror. If you take out the palm on, you don't have to worry. You can send in your own Dondoza Tatsugiri and then you can play that out on your end. Looks like a uh, terrestrialization here though from this Fluttermane, the fairy typing to help boost those moves like Dazzling Gleam, which would hit both of these Pokemon. You also then have to be paying attention here to something like the Protect, but it does put you vulnerable for that fake out from the palm on on the opposite side of the field if palm on chose to go for that instead of seeing something like a double protect from Bouchon this turn. And it looks like Bouchon could be rewarded for not worrying about the fake out since it looked like Chuppa did not lock that in. Yeah, Rage Powder from this Volcarona here. Icy Wind from the Tatsugiri will hit both of these Pokemon. Break the Focus Sash on that Volcarona is going to slow them down as well. The Pokemon on Chuppa's side here are pretty speedy anyway. This Double Shock is going to do a ton of damage and is going to probably be able to put Chuppa in a great lead into this Volcarona. It's enough to get that knockout thanks to that Icy Wind breaking that Focus Sash. You don't have to worry about any more Rage Powders and you already have the Pokemon advantage. Yeah, just like game one, Chuppa gets out to the early Pokemon advantage now, and then you use your Terra typing here on the Fluttermane oh. anyway, so you gotta lock in. Tatsugiri has fainted though, Joe. We are not going to see the same mirror unless this Palmog goes for a Revival Blessing this turn into the Tatsugiri, sends in Dondozo now. Uh, I don't know, because you have three HP on the Palmog, so literally a light breeze would be able to knock it over and stop the Revival Blessing from coming around. Like, that's why the focus ash is so crucial on Palmont because you guaranteed get a revival blessing. But at three HP, unless you know, with two Pokemon that have access to spread attacks as well, potentially, or even just targeting into the uh, Palmont slot, there you're not really going to be able to use it. So I don't think Chuppa is going to have access to the Revival Blessing in both of these first two games. You don't think something like a Tailwind Revival Blessing here from this Talon Flame, plus the fact that you're faster than that Fluttermane on the and opposite you did, side. And there was the Icy Wind. Yeah, the and the Icy too, Wind. So, so it does, I think it kind of does give him this option, right? If he knows what his end game is, is to go for something, but then you still lose that Pokemon in the palm on. So then do you try and just get damage off onto the Tatsugiri on the opposite side with another Double Shock? I don't know. I think the Palmot's in a really, in a, a really uh, difficult spot. You know it is going to go down most likely at the end of the turn. Tailwind does activate, so you will have the speed boost on your side right now. But Palmot, I don't think, is long. And no, you don't go for the Revival Blessing because you can try to get a KO. Yeah, this Double Shock here into this Tatsugiri. It is not super effective thanks to that Dragon Typing, but you get the Tatsugiri off the field. Bouchon cannot bring it back. He does not have a Revival Blessing user on his team. And now Chuppa is up 3-2. to two. And the uh, Shadow Ball actually targets Talonflame. Chuppa's sticking around at 3 HP on this Palmon. And the, and the Talonflame hangs on as well at 11. These Pokemon are faster than this Fluttermane. You can still do a lot of damage. Dondozo's going to come in here as well. It is not going to want to take something like a Double Shock. No, definitely not, because it has already, uh, Bouchon has already used his Terra typing on Fluttermane, meaning uh, Don Joso has to stay as this water type, which is not a great position for him. Uh, arguably, Chuppa actually wants Talonflame to knock itself out so he can get his, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, his, his Don Joso onto the field in this moment. But uh, at any point, Bouchon uh, could be really threatened by a attack into that slot. And if you are smart and protect it at while the Palmot is going, for an attack there that leaves it wide open for potentially the Flutter main to try to knock it out. Yeah, Dondoza going for a protect here, not trying to take something even like a Will-O-Wisp from this Talon Flame, which would at least make that attack not as strong. Brave Bird, though, a great way to knock yourself out and take a KO, a great trade on that Flutter main, allowing you to bring in your own Pokemon. The uh, Palm on here, if it clicks Revival Blessing, I would actually I would actually freak out. I don't think it is going to. I think it probably just went straight for that Double Shock just to try and get damage, even though this Dondozo is carrying Protect. So it would have been pro uh, Oh, he called the Protect oh, Jump as a oh, stud. Absolutely killer move here, right? This Dondozo is now going to be facing off against a Dondozo with Tatsugiri. So it is not going to, uh, you know, it might just be a little bit crazy here. The Revival Blessing doesn't knock you out either for using it. So you're still on the field. You can still go for a double shock, especially with that Tailwind behind you. Yeah, and the and Bouchon's Dondozo just protected, right? So uh, you're not really worried about it going for a double protect since the odds are so low. You're free to just double up into this slot. The battle was canceled, and we are saved from another Dondozo fight. I am so incredibly thankful that we did not have to put all of you through a uh, second half of that. Congratulations to Chapa for moving on through the top 32. Condolences as well to Bouchon, who played absolutely amazing in his very first play Pokemon tournament and did put himself through that ringer of playing through that Dondozo mirror in top 32. So 
Really great play by both of these trainers. So excited to have still been able to see them in Top Cut. For you guys with the bingo sheet, I am hoping you're happy for the Dondozo mirror. We'll be careful about those ones in the future. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, you know, just shout out to Bushan. Obviously, this is an incredible accomplishment in your first ever play Pokemon event, making it to top 32 yeah, out of almost 800 masters for VGC. That's, you know, unbelievable. Uh, it is unfortunate that you ran into such a strong trainer in Chuppa, who is really experienced in this Dondozo matchup, as uh, what was really interesting about those two teams, particularly, each of them only had one Paradox Pokemon, so it was like almost kind of a Series 1 team with like just one little adjustment. Yeah, absolutely, right? It seems like they were very much going back to what was a comfort for them, especially Chuppa's, where he brought the Brute Bonnet instead of a Moongus. So it's already something that's really, really close. It's just the, the throwback Thursday form of a Moongus there in that Brute Bonnet. You know? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't, you know, I think it's still a really interesting way to see how these trainers team build. And like you said, Different roads, same def destination, really, with with how they kind of got to where they were in the team building. Yeah, I, that, that's really cool. Like the Focus Sash Volcarona, I can see how Bouchon got so far with that strategy. It didn't really help as much in uh, in this matchup against Chuppa, but definitely a really cool thing. I'd love to try to make Volcarona work a little bit better. Uh, I feel like every time I try to, uh, I'm kind of like between too many different ways of getting it, but I'd you know, love to pick Bouchon's brain or anyone else that has a Volcarona in, uh, in Top Cut. But I do want to tell you, maybe we did get an update that Sierra said she uses either PEMDAS or BIMDAS if she's speaking English or French, and re you know, respectively. And now I'm just more confused than ever. I'm just glad I'm not bilingual for that one specific reason. I am sad I am not bilingual for about 5,000 other reasons. Um, <laughs> but I'm glad you're, I'm not for that one. For that, yeah, for that particular one. Math was never my strong suit. Uh, even even if I tried to go to college for math, it did not, it did not, uh, was not, was not my future intention. Instead, I'm just really good at talking. Yes, that's why, <laughs> that's why you're, you know, welcome to the big leagues, Maeve. This is what happens. <laughs> You know, you, you stay up late, catching our barouges, having fun with your buds, and you wake up and get right dropped right into the uh, Don Dozo mirrors. Yeah, you did give me the choice to pick our match this this round too. I will, I will give, uh, make sure that you know everybody hey, it's knows a team, that. It's a team effort, team you know, effort. Ju just like Don Dozo's Tatsugiri. It's That's a, it's true. A that is true. And out, you know, those guys were cooking. If we were going to talk about it, speaking of cooking. Oh yeah. Speaking of cooking, the guys with the chef hat and the one guy with the chef jacket, the Lily pad boys there's one of them in top cut his name is brian collins i don't know how he's doing at the moment but we may be able to see a player uh you know cooking a little bit maybe yeah, up here upstream. maybe you can make us some omelets or something because i'm a little hungry after that match <laughs> not sushi you don't want sushi no i'm disgusted by sushi right now i just <laughs> saw it for 25 minutes <laughs> <laughs> I think at that point, I don't know. I'm still, I'm a big sushi at Pokemon events fan, personally. Wow, you, you live dangerously. I'll I do live that. dangerously. Uh, London, I think London at Worlds, I survived a lot. There was a really good sushi place in, uh, in that venue. So if you guys are going there for EUIC, maybe pay attention to where you're going to get that sushi because I really enjoyed it. So either way, you know, <laughs> just to kind of, to come back from that tangent there though, Chapa, Chapa now has to kind of pay attention to his next several steps, right? He got in to be a finalist in San Diego. He came in top four, he lost to the winner. He's probably got that drive in him right now to kind of go all the way, especially on such a tear. Oh, absolutely. I think Chuppa is one of the, you know, most driven players in VGC, honestly, because he sees the goal is right there, right outside of his grasp so many times, so many different top cuts and so many different regionals in the modern era of regional championships. And he's just been so close. And even in San Diego, it was just a little heartbreaking in the end, losing to G-Sock Lee's team. It was just incredible how, uh, how that team was constructed. So uh, I think Chuppa is no stranger to this type of experience. And, you know, for, for, for his best efforts in that match there, I hope he has a, uh, a long, successful day here in Orlando. Yeah, and I think at this point, right, you know, you may not be facing something like a Terra Poison Garganackle, possibly in Top Cut, which may be a little bit more reassuring to Maybe Chuppa. we'll get two Garganackles in Top 16. What That's about gonna, that? We're going to put that on for Rosemary and Sierra. Okay, I like <laughs> it. I like it. And then we'll give them rock facts. We'll give them salt facts. I actually can do rock facts. That's one I can do. I can, I can, I can figure out some good rock facts, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> you just have rock packs just loaded, just ready to go? Oh, absolutely. For sure. Absolutely. Okay. I'll, All fi right. I'll figure some out. Not, not Actually, not loaded. That That is a little bit of cap on my part there. But <laughs> either way, I'm sure I could find something there, right? I think um, 
Maybe salt facts. It is really, we. this is the weekend of cooking, right? Sushi, salt, everything like that. I think apart from Joe and I though, we should probably take a listen from Chapa himself. We're gonna toss it over to that interview lounge. Uh, Adam, take it away. Thank you so much, guys. And I'm glad you finally learned the light of bid maths, the correct way to do an order operations in maths. But the most important thing, Chopper, congratulations on making it through top 32. I'm Thank gonna address you. the elephant in the room first. Um, you owe Joe and Maeve an apology for putting the Dondozo mirror on stream. I think that's on you. Did Joe and Maeve not enjoy commentating that exhilarating game one? Uh, I, I'd have to get their opinion on it. I think they had a lot of fun with it. Um, but you are one of the first people to put that on. Of course, uh, how many times have you played that this weekend? The full mirror? Um, I played Frieza, I mean, sorry, um, my opponent in Swiss, and, as well as Carson, another Dondozo player in Swiss. So I, uh, I lost to both of them in Swiss, and this oh. is my first win against Dondozo of the tournament. So you learned your lesson from yes. yesterday. All right, game two, a, a whole lot cleaner, uh, a lot better. How did you feel kind of coming out of that one? Um, obviously, it was, it was a little bit faster. Uh, what made you avoid the mirror, maybe? Yeah, I, um, you know, I realized that this mirror is all about taking a Mon advantage at the very start. Uh, part of the reason that I lost to my opponent, as well as Carson and Swiss, was I let myself fall behind on Pokemon, and I need to come up with a strategy where I can threaten a knockout on turn one and make sure that my opponent isn't able to do that faster than me. With strong Pokemon like Life Orb, Flutter Mane, that's really difficult to keep up with, so I needed to, like, kind of up the ante myself with strong moves like uh, Pokemon. Yeah, Paul Mark, uh, doing a lot of work. I know you've obviously used it before. Uh, looking at your team from San Diego, obviously you're kind of the Paul Mark guy now. That's the, <laughs> the reputation you're getting. Uh, is that is that a good feeling? Do you feel people are sleeping on it potentially? Somewhat. I, I don't think Palmot's like quite as strong in series uh, two as it was in series one, just because the speed tiers and like pace of the format have gone up by so much. But Revival Blessing is still an amazing move, especially in a matchup like this where Pokemon count really matters so much. It's really great to be able to have uh, an extra one in the back. And with Focus Ash, it's just Palmot can actually do that very reliably, especially against slower paced teams. Yeah, it, I mean, it seems to be doing work. Obviously, you, you got to show off the Revival Blessing again on stream. Um, really good. So did you, you know, obviously, I think we came into this, we, we hard pivoted out from Series 1, quickly dropped into Series 2. What was that team building process like? Because it's looking pretty similar to me. Yeah, so I wanted to figure out which of the ideas from my San Diego team that I could move forward to this one, because ultimately I was like really unsure what to do for this. And I realized like, oh wait, I can still use some of my favorite Pokemon, like uh, a new grass and dark type, or Golden Go is still amazing. And I just realized, why not stick with what works instead of like trying to reinvent the wheel and ultimately play not only a strong team, but one that I'm incredibly familiar with by now. Yeah, you, you seem to be mastering it. You seem to be playing it super well. Of course, San Diego was a good time for you uh, coming in second place. I know it's probably not the finish you would have wanted, um, but looking through the bracket, obviously you guys all get to go home. You get to look at the other players in, in top 32. How are you feeling about kind of taking that forward? And, and I know obviously where you want to be, but how are you, how are you feeling kind of tackling I'm not actually too sure what the rest of my bracket looks like. I wasn't that optimistic about being able to come out of top 32 because I'd lost to my opponent so badly in Swiss and I was able to just come up with a much better game plan for this. So I'm not actually too sure what it's going to be like moving forward. I, I think I might be playing perhaps Justin Karras in top 16, but I'm really not that sure. Like. Uh, just w I, not another Dondozo mirror, thankfully. Oh yeah, I think uh, avoiding the Dondozo probably pretty key for you, um, but I think you know that's something that's been slightly on the decline a little bit um, mm -hmm. for this tournament. It's not performed quite as well as it did in Series One, um, but you stuck with it. So you know, obviously, you say it's comfortable. Is there any other reason, uh, or do you just think it's you know people have just dropped it because maybe it's. It it's not as cool, it's not as fun as the, the Paradox Pokemon. I think people's respect for it has dropped a little bit. I think there's a lot of people who maybe come in with the team with uh, some really bulky Pokemon like Arcanine, Iron Hands, Amoongus, and they think like, oh, I'm going to be able to pivot around Tontozo. But the amazing thing is, um, and this is why I'm using the attack boost in Tatsugiri instead of speed at this point, it just like, it really lets you keep the pace up even against bulkier teams like that. I think Tontozo is still incredibly strong in Series 2, and unfortunately, it's not going anywhere. Yeah, the mirror is uh, certainly not the most thrilling, but it it, it gets you wins, right? It, it's the way to play the game, uh, and I, I think you know showing it off, you know somebody's got to somebody's got to do it at some point, right? It's gonna happen, so you just made it happen on stream for us. Uh, mm -hmm. I know there's I know there is another Dondozo mirror actually out in the field uh, that was kind of taking it through it, so I don't know where it lines up in your bracket. Really, I didn't realize there was another Dondozo mirror in top 32. I, I'm only aware of um, one or two other Dondozo players in top. I'm not sure how many of us there were total. 
Oh yeah, I didn't. I didn't want to scare you with that. Fact. <laughs> I just. I thought it's fair to tell you that it, it definitely is out there and it definitely could cause problems. So, right. Uh, something to mull over for for the rest of the day. Well, that said, I'm gonna let you go. Uh, get ready for top 16. Um, it's only, you know, a few more rounds. You're back yep. at that same table. <laughs> so, good luck on that one. Of course, there's you know 31 other players started the day. We're down to another 15. So don't tell any others. But you know, you're bringing poor Mark. You've got the revival blessing. So. You are my favorite. Paul Mott brings it back. Paul Mott definitely brings it back. And we'll be coming back very, very shortly with more action here in Orlando.